Hey everybody, in this video, I'm going to show you 15 different ways to practice scales. You know, we as guitarists, we get stuck a lot of times just going up and down, just approaching them from the lowest note to the highest note, and that can get boring after a while. There are much more helpful ways to practice scales that are actually going to be more useful to you when you're actually playing music or soloing. So we're going to get into those. Hey, I'm Steve Krenz for Guitar Gathering, and it's all coming up. Before we get started, make sure and download the PDF that goes along with this lesson. I put the link in the description down below. All the examples that I'm going to be talking about are written out in notation and in tab in that PDF. So it's all free and that's going to be very helpful for you to do. There's all kinds of scales that we could start with. There's open scales that use open strings. <laughs> But I'm going to choose a movable form. So if you look at that first example there, we're going to do a C major scale, and we're just going to use up here at the seventh position this movable form. What I mean by that, movable, is that it's based off of a root. And here our second finger on the sixth string is the root. So here it is. If I put my second finger on the sixth string at the eighth fret, that's a C. So this is a C major scale going up two octaves, just straight up. And then the descending version of that. And that's how we usually practice scales. It's just going up and down, up and down these scales. After a while, that just gets so boring. So let's see if we can think of some different ways to break ourselves out of that. Well, one simple way to do that is to play it descending first instead of ascending. So if you started descending first, it would be like this. then back up again. Even something as simple as that will break yourself out of the common pattern trap that we get in as guitar players. Well, but don't think of them as just scales. We could work on all kinds of techniques while just while using these scales. So take a look at the next thing down there. The one of the easiest things we can do is work on our picking while we're doing scales. So we Typically do a down and up pattern when you're picking uh, through a regular scale, but try doing varying it up. Let's do all down strokes. So if I did all down strokes on this, I can get a lot of power on it because of the power because of the strength of a down stroke. Or what if I did all up strokes? Even a simple change like that will break your, your picking habits and it will force you to kind of think about what you're doing again and that's what we're going for. All right, so we've tried doing all down strokes and all up strokes. When would I use that? Well, a lot of times if I'm doing, oh, I'm playing electric and I'm doing lead stuff and I want something with a lot of power, I'm gonna be using those all down strokes. So it's a good technique to practice. You know, Larry Carlton, has a, uh, in some of his teaching, he shows how he uses actually not the flat of the pick going in down and up motion, he uses the side of his pick. That's a good thing we could practice with our scale. So if I did the side of my pick, kind of an upstroke with the side of your pick. smaller sound, but it's a much more dynamic sound that, that Larry Carlton, even Robin Ford used that sound. All right, so that's one thing we can, we can use with them. Another way to improve our picking while using scales is to simply m start to multiply the amount of picking that we're doing. So instead of each note getting one pick, we're going to do two motions for each note. So it's going to be a down and up motion. So it's going to be two strokes per each note. So that would be on the next page. This is the top of page two. I'm going to do down and up on all the notes. Now you'll notice on the example there, I have the first measure written out so you can see the pattern, and then I just have slashes for the next measure. So in all of these examples, when you see those slashes, that just means continue the pattern. I just didn't want to write it all out there, and you end up with a document that's 18 pages long or something. So whenever you see slashes, that just means continue up through the pattern. Now, oftentimes I'll start the pattern, then I'll give you slashes to continue the pattern, and then I will show you just the ending lick to show you how you spin out of the pattern. 
Now, if I wanted to use, that's using double two notes per, per each scale step. What if I did three notes per each scale step? Then that forces our picking into a different function. So instead of just a pure down, up, down, up, now we're doing for each note, it'll be a down, up, down, switching over to an up, down, up. This constant switching back and forth between those two, three groupings, down, up, down, and then up, down, up, is what makes this one a little bit trickier. So if I did the next one written down there in, on page two, it would be. And then you can practice them descending as well. And all the way back down. You'll notice that's kind of tricky if you haven't done that kind of work before. Now, another way to practice it, maybe turn on a metronome, and you could do, instead of straight eighths, like we've been playing, da 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 we're gonna do swing eighths, kind of a triplet feel. Do, da, do, da, do, da, do, da, do, da. So if I did that, it would be, it would sound like this. I can even accent that last eighth in those triplets. Do, da, do, da, do, da, do. Make that feel. good way to work on our jazz feel is to incorporate those triplets and those accents. Take a look at the next page. This would be page number three. What do we have there? Well, here's another way I can combine them. I can start using patterns. Now, in this one, I'm going to start easy, and I'm going to do a three-note pattern. It's called an up three pattern. So we're going to go one, two, three, and then I go down to the start on the second step of the scale and do three notes from that. Two, three, four, and go up from there. So if I did that, it would sound like this. just spin out of it there at the top. To descend, I have it written out there. And then all the way back down. That's using a three note pattern, an up three sort of a pattern. Another thing I can do is do an up four pattern. Now, I have it written down as 16th notes in the examples there. Don't, don't get that confused. It's not a tempo thing. It's not, it's not like these are going faster. It's just a grouping of four. I wanted to do a grouping of four. So if I did an up four, now I'm going one, two, three, four, and then going to the second step, two, three, four, five, and going up that way. And then descending. Working your way down from that. All of these are little patterns that are more likely to be used in music than just going straight up and straight down. You know, when you're actually playing a solo or reading some music or something like that, the, the tendency of melodic lines is to do jumps and then to do a little bit of stepwise motion and then a jump again. So this is what's more helpful about doing patterns like this when you're practicing these scales is to practice, because you're practicing the jumping and the patterns going up. You can even do a five note, up five sort of a progression. I did that, that's the middle example there, the third example. And if I did that, I just had it written in three, four time, but it would sound like this. There's five, and then I go the second step and go up five. And you can even finish it out and back down, then down five. And work your way back down. It's a little trickier to get all of those notes in, but it makes you think, and that's the idea. Look at the next one. Instead of doing just a, a sp specific pattern up, now I'm going to add one more to it. I'm going to go up three and then down one. This is a very helpful pattern because this is how melodies work a lot of the times and a lot of the runs that you're going to be doing on guitar. Up three and then down one. One, two, three, one. That's the pattern. Then I do it on the second note. Okay, 
and then work your way back down. That's a particularly helpful one because you're going to do a lot of that in, in real playing. Okay, take a look at the next page. This is, what is this, page four? We've done some patterns. We've practiced our picking. Another way that I can use scales to make myself a better player is to use practice these intervals while using scales. All right, so if I did thirds, which is kind of the most common interval that you're going to see in music is going to be thirds, Next, followed next by sixth, would be, which is kind of a flip of a third, you know, in C, C, D, E, C, D, E, that's a third. But if I put the C up an octave, that's the sixth, if I think of it in relation to the E. So thirds and sixths are kind of like cousins of each other. They're related. But let's take a first look at the C scale in thirds. This is top of page four. Okay, so if I'm now jumping strings, and then you work your way all the way up. If I wanted to descend with that, that's in thirds. What if I wanted to do it in sixths? Remember the cousin of thirds, okay? So that is requiring an even larger string jump, usually between one string, skipping a string, and then a, a, another string. So you have the string in between. So it becomes a different type of picking exercise, a string skipping picking exercise. So if I did it in sixth, And then if I went down with it, a great exercise. Tricky, tricky to do that, skipping those strings like that. But that's a, a jump, the third and the sixth, that you're going to be doing a lot of. The last one, is, as far as intervals, that's really helpful, is to do an octave. Now, you could do an octave up the, up the neck, which is helpful to do it too. But it ends up being the same finger uh, shape going all the way up, which is helpful to practice. That's really helpful. Another way to do it is to stay in one position, and then you're constantly flipping. A trickier exercise to do it that way. So we've done them in thirds, we've done them in sixth, we've done them in octaves. I had a great guitar player over at the house many years ago. His name is Chuck Yamick. Great guitar player here in Nashville. And Chuck uh, showed me a way of doing octaves, but displacing the octaves. So I do some in one octave, and then I switch to a different octave, and it creates this very jagged sort of sound when you're playing. So there's two different ways you could approach that displaced octave scenario, which I have written on page five there. You notice the first measure is I, I'm doing two in one octave, and then I jump the octave and play the third and the fourth note. Then I have the fifth and the sixth back down the lower octave, and then the seventh and eighth in the higher octave. So that first measure would be Sounds very jagged, but if you look at it, it's the same notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. I'm just displacing these octaves. Now, that's in a predictable pattern, too low, too high. Now we're gonna go in an unpredictable pattern, in a random pattern. If I did that, let's say I descended, and I put, let's say there's no reason to this, I'm just random. So I have C, then I have the low B, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, high G, F, E, D, C, B. Now, wow, what a jagged sort of sound, but it truly is just the scale, C, D, E, F, G, and back up again. So if I play that descending random pattern again, very wild sort of sounding scale, that is a regular major scale just displacing the octaves. It's a cool effect. It's a cool trick to have in your, in your toolkit. 
of being a guitarist. Now another way to practice scales is to do not just thirds, but to, we're going to do triads. We're going to have now a three note pattern. So in the, in the key of C, this would be one, three, five, C, E, G, and then I would do two, four, six, or D, F, A, and so I'm working my way through these triads. There you go. Another very helpful way of playing scales. Arpeggios like that is something you're going to be doing a lot of as a guitar player. Let's talk about these last couple of examples here. These are called switchbacks. A common thing in melodies, a common way of that, that melodies and, and melodic lines move is when they do a large jump, not just a third, but let's say to a sixth, if they do a large jump in one direction, then they will descend stepwise in another direction. You hear it all the time in music. So it's a good thing to practice. A large leap in one direction, followed by a couple of steps down in the opposite direction. And then when I, let's say, descend, it's the opposite. A big jump down, followed by a couple steps up. So look at that first line on page five. This would be the last line, the first of the switchbacks, okay? Now, since a common sixth interval in any key is going to be from the fifth of the scale to the third of the scale, third up an octave. In this, in our case, it would be in the key of C, the fifth would be a G going up to a, an E high, high above the, the, the octave C. That's a sixth. So that's where I'm going to start this one. I'm going to start this one on the fifth. So don't freak out that I'm not starting on the root. I'm going to start this one on the fifth because it'll end a little bit uh, easier. So that's the pattern. Large leap up and then two steps down. Almost sounds a little Bach uh, oriented. Very common little pattern that he used quite a bit. Let me play that for you one more time. If I sped that up, it would be. a good pattern to have underneath your fingers. Why would I want to practice that? So that when I'm soloing and I know that I want to try something high up, I've already got some finger patterns underneath my fingers that I can, when I reach for it, it I already have got a pattern that works for it there. That's why these work. That's why it's something that we should practice as instrumentalists, as guitarists, to have these little patterns underneath our fingers. Take a look at the next one. This is number page six, the top line. Now, if I wanted to descend using that same um, switch back, a sixth down and then a couple of steps up, it sounds like this. Very common melody, you hear it all the time. If I did the next one down. Tricky if you have not read that before to be able to read something like that, but so helpful because that's a pattern that you're going to play a lot. If I did that just for the sake of argument, I've stayed here in the seventh position, but I could just as well put these in other positions. So if I did the, uh, the let's say the ascending one, but I did it lowered in an octave, do I have these? You start to use these lower strings, and I put this down here in the in the second position where the major scale, C major scale, would be. A little bit different shape, but if I did this switch back in that pattern, it would be. A great pattern to practice your scales. So there you go. There are some ways that you can practice your scales. Now, you we, we did these in a major scale, but you could just as well do them in a minor scale or a pentatonic scale or a natural minor scale, or a harmonic minor scale, or a melodic minor scale. Just for a second, let me talk to you about there's three types of minor scales. The natural minor scale shares the same key signature as the major scale. So if a C major scale, A minor, if I go two steps down, A minor, natural minor, is the same thing.
one. Same thing as a C major scale, just starting going from A to A. Okay, that's a natural minor scale. The harmonic minor scale is the bottom half of that. Same thing, A, B, C, D, E, F. But then I add this leading tone right before the A, the G sharp. To kind of, if I'm in the five of, a, of, a, of an A minor, an E seventh, that gives me that G sharp there. A very uh, uh, unique sounding scale. Very Spanish sounding scale. Very helpful if, if I'm soloing over like an E7 flat nine or something like that in the key of A minor. Man, I can do that scale all day long. That's a harmonic minor, a good scale. You can still do thirds in that. A tricky little way, it's just that one note being different, but it's a good way to practice. Now, the melodic minor scale is the same thing, same lower half of a minor scale, but then it does the upper half as a major scale. So I have A, B, C, D, E, and then F sharp, G sharp, A. Not used really uh, as much, but it's an, another scale that you could be practicing as well. So anyway, those three types of minor scales. I've got pentatonic scales. If I did some of these up three patterns or up four patterns in a pentatonic scale. Put enough distortion on that, play it fast enough, next thing you know I sound like Eric Johnson. Okay, little things to practice. Now, another way to practice our scale is to do um, Ron Block and uh, um, Mick Goodridge is another great guitar instructor. He talked about doing a scale just on one string up the neck. A good way to learn the notes on your neck going up this way, or to do it just doing two strings. Kind of folding back, full back scales. Bluegrass players use those a lot. There you go. 15 or so different ways to practice scales rather than just going up and down. Up and down is great, but these are some extra ways that you can practice to get some extra skills underneath your, your uh, in your tool bag of being a guitar player. And you know, this is all important. I mean, I play guitar for a living here in Nashville, and these are things, these are skills that I use all the time. Hey, if you're interested in learning more about scales, I did a, um, I did a fretboard workout series called Major Scale Mastery, where we go through all uh, the open scales you need to know, a couple of movable scales, all kinds of patterns. If you're interested in diving deep into this, check out the Major Scale Mastery uh, fretboard workout series that I did. There's a Major Scale Mastery 1 and this uh, second one as well. I'll put the link up there. I hope you've learned a lot. Make sure and download the music for this. Use this in your own playing. Change keys. Go to different, you know, do them in F and then do them in G. Play them with a metronome. That's a good habit to get into. All these things can help your playing. Hey, I'm Steve Krenz for Guitar Gathering, and we will see you next time.